When most people hear the word Rankin, Rankin Collection, they immediately think of Jeanette Rankin, uh, the first woman uh, ever elected to the United States Congress, uh, who was from Montana. Here in these parts, we also think of Wellington Rankin, who was her brother and a, a colorful character. But this is a different Rankin family and a very different Rankin story. Uh, James Brownlee Rankin was a school teacher and historian whose application in life was Charlie Russell. He spent years collecting information about Montana's cowboy artist in the hope of publishing a definitive biography and illustrated catalog of his work. Unfortunately for Rankin, he never wrote that book. Fortunately for us, he did something that is probably far more valuable. Uh, James Brownlee Rankin was born in Denver in 1900. After initial schooling in Chicago, at the age of 10, he and his sister were sent to Europe where they studied at schools in France, Spain, Italy, and Germany. Returning home in 1914, at the outbreak of World War I, Rankin attended the Horace Mann School in New York City. He later received a BA in liberal arts from Princeton and an MA from the University of Pennsylvania. During his years at Princeton, Rankin developed a great love for books and for the rest of his life collected rare books and first editions. At some point, he also developed an interest in art and particularly Western art. This avocation led him to begin collecting books illustrated by Western artists, especially Charlie Russell and Frederick Remington. I think if every time I try to press this remote and uh, you'd think eventually I'd figure out it doesn't work, but okay. So after graduating with his master's degree, Rankin began his career as a teacher at the Collegiate School for Boys in New York City. This is a day school for boys um, that purports to be the oldest independent school in the United States and traces its origins to 1628 when it was uh, founded by the Dutch West India Company and the Dutch Reformed Church. Rankin remained on the faculty there until 1939, and as a teacher, with his summers free, he could pursue his many interests, which included travel, book collecting, Western art, and history. By 1936, Rankin had developed a very strong interest in the work and life of Charles M. Russell, and that summer, he decided to research and write a biography of Russell and produce an illustrated catalog of all of his known works. For the next four years, Rankin devoted all of his free time and most of his effort to this endeavor. Although he never achieved his primary goal of producing a Russell biography, for future generations of scholars, he created something far more valuable. As historian J. Frank Doby noted in the 1950s, nobody else pursuing a Western theme has ever garnered such a variegated mass of letters on any subject as James Brownlee Rankin has on Russell. And now, thanks to the wonders of modern technology, Rankin efforts are now available to everyone via the digitization process and the Montana Memory Project. These materials have only very recently been placed online, and if you use it in the near future, you will no doubt notice that there are probably still a few glitches in the uh, implementation of this project. Also, um, just in my personal opinion, the Montana Memory Project has amazing things on it, but it's not always uh, the easiest website to use. It's not as intuitive as it might be. It's probably way more intuitive than it would be if I had designed the website, however, so. <laughs> the easiest way to find the Rankin Collection is to Google Montana Memory Project and then scroll down. Oh, guess what? It still doesn't work. Anyway. Uh, scroll down in that box until you get to where it says Charles M. Russell Research Materials from the James B. Rankin Collection. Then click on the link that says Browse the Complete Collection. And here's what you'll find. First and foremost are four boxes of correspondence, correspondence which constitute 80% of the collection. These letters are the most valuable for research on Russell and, the, and on ranching and cowboy life during the open range era. 
Many friends and acquaintances of Russell corresponded extensively with Rankin, and their reminiscences would have formed the basis of his book. Other correspondents discussed the Russell paintings and sculptures in their collection. The letters also reflect the provenance of much of the artist's work, the kind of shows it was appeared in, and the methods by which it was acquired. Rankin began by placing uh, advertisements in regional and national newspapers as well as pertinent magazines. From this, he developed a wide range of contacts who had known Russell or knew of or owned works by the cowboy artist. He traveled extensively to interview individuals and to catalog Russell's art, and he wrote hundreds and hundreds of letters. Um, in the process, he developed a personal relationship with these people and spent about four years corresponding with them, visiting them. Uh, the letters not only talk about Russell, they talk about personal illness, family dogs. Uh, Mrs. Goodall, who wrote a letter in February of 38, described a trip to New York, tells, tells of visiting uh, Niagara Falls as a girl where a tightrope walker stopped in Midwalk to make pancakes. Um, so you get news about the garden, the weather, how they spent their holidays. It's, in my fun, just uh, history nerd, great reading. Uh, but in addition to the, um, oh, okay, so in uh, one of the people that Rankin did correspond with was Nancy Russell. Uh, originally, she was quite hesitant. She herself was planning on writing a biography on Russell, and, and her responses were basically, no, this is, this is my story. You can't tell it. Um, as it went on, she warmed up to him, and um, they corresponded back and forth. In one letter, he wrote her, um, in addition to many letters, clippings, and photographs of people who knew Charlie, I have received a picture of him in an antique frame, numerous pages of materials written about him, his life, experiences, stories, work, and play. And there has not been one word of adverse criticism, of bitterness, or ill feeling. This is a remarkable commentary from men of all stations in life and from those whose activities are concluded and who sit by the fires dreaming of other days. Um, and then just a quick, there's, like I said, there's all kinds of fun things in here. I'm just going to read a couple of quick excerpts. Uh, somebody wrote Rankin in a, a response, excuse the pencil as ink has frozen and someone used the pen point for toothpick and must have walked off with the point between their teeth. <laughs> His next letter begins, the ink has thawed out, as you can see by the blot blotches. Uh, a couple of examples of stories about Charlie. The sheep were up in Pig Eye Basin, and two men came along on horseback. Russell was sitting on a rock, modeling something in clay, and brought it over to show them. After some conversation, Russell asked where they were going, and they said Utica. So Russell piped up. Stop at the ranch and tell my boss that if he expects me to go on herding for him, he had better send me some more sheep. Most of these have got lost. <laughs> Another correspondent wrote, my impressions of Charles M. Russell, I believe, are the same as would be of those of any person who ever met him. You felt as if there was nothing concealed and that he was 100% what he purported to be. The same feeling I imagine one would have had upon meeting Abraham Lincoln. Another story, Charlie was sure a big-hearted, whole, big-hearted, whole-souled friend to everybody, but as far as his stories are concerned, I don't recall any I would care to have published. <laughs> uh, another uh, quote from Rankin to Nancy, you mentioned my selecting wheat from the chaff, but I have no chaff. The information sent to me is all in a spirit of kindness, admiration, delight, and best wishes. Every rule has at least one exception, though. A certain man wrote to me and said that everyone who told of the West was a damned liar, and that Western stories were all damned lies, and that while he hoped I wasn't a damned liar myself, he warned me that everyone else was. <laughs> oh, this is an example of a letter. Uh, the letters come from people like Teddy Blue Abbott, um, Grace Stone Coates, a poet from Martinsdale, who said, when I tell you that Russell was lazy, don't think it was a criticism, it was just a fact. Um, so lots of people, you know, if you're familiar with Montana history, there's lots of people there you know, and, and a lot of people you haven't heard of. So other, the remaining 20%, other than the letters, consists of photographs of Russell uh, paintings, newspaper clippings uh, concerning Charlie, Nancy, 
uh, Cowboy Reunions, Montana History, and Rankin's Research Efforts. And this is an example of a newspaper clipping. And um, lastly, of Rankin's research notes. Rankin moved to Pasadena, California in 1939 to be closer to his father and to pursue his teaching and research interests. He married Josephine Crenshaw of New York City in 1940. And after that, although he never lost his lifelong interest in Russell, he, quick, he did not continue working on his biography um, or catalog after that year. The one piece that Rankin did publish on Russell was a bibli bibliography of published works illustrated by the artist, which appeared in American Book Illustrations in 1938. Rankin died in California in 1962. A quick overview of the Rankin Collection, I definitely uh, encourage you to check it out.